So in this example, we've got what is essentially a different methodology for di displaying gains and losses. You'll notice here that the way that I've set this up is to have the section here for gains and losses instead of having gains in the revenue section and losses in the expenses section, I've stripped out the gains and losses and presented these as separate facts in between revenue and expenses. Let's have a look and see how that will look in real life. Here's our gains and losses, and if we go down to that, you can see the gains displayed like that. Now, this would be more realistic and more meaningful if I show you the comparison across the years. So, we'd need three comparative years, because I do have the data in here for three comparative years. And here's our gains and losses. So we go down to the note. In these two years, we've got gains. And in this year, we've got losses. And you can see the gains minus the losses gives us a net position. So gains minus losses. It actually looks like this is calculating incorrectly. Actually, it's adding it up. But I'll show you how we can get this to work and how to build this capability. So let's go to our report templates and we will add using custom template. We're going to go into our statement of comprehensive income and we're going to mount that section between the expenses and the revenue section here. So if you thought about that so actually, let's have a look. We should have that mounted between here and here. Let's add in what we need. So we need two spaces and we need a group. Now, when you've added those, what you'll notice is they drop into the bottom of that sector. So this is the sector here. There's that new group. Let's add in our spaces first. So you can see I'm just dragging this up, looking for where, looking for where I want this. A little bit far there. So we've got one spacer. And we want to grab our other spacer. So this is a delicate task, but if you, if you are patient, you'll get it. So I've got my two spaces in. Now I need this new group. Which I've called as such. So let's wind that up and drag that up in between our two spaces. So here we have our gains and our losses mounted. Um, actually, what we want to do is we want to have this. We want to have this mounted there. So that's our gains and our losses. Now, what we will do now is we will open that up and we will drag these in. So we want our capital gains. want our increasing balance. So anything that's essentially a gain and a gain or a loss compared to uh, compared to revenues and expenses, we're trying to delineate the two. So even comprehensive income, which is 
essentially unrealized gains and losses, that should really be renamed as such. And there is one more thing that we will want in here as well. And that is, so other revenue, and we'll strip out our, we'll strip out foreign gains. So you're noticing what I'm doing is sort of put, I'm positioning it so when I see the little line go in there, that's what's telling me I can drop it in. Let's just put it there because this sort of opened up. You can move them around if you want, but this should suffice. Now I'm going to take the notes out. I'm unlinking these notes. We don't need separate notes. We want a single note for our gains and losses. Right, so we've got four categories gone in gains and losses. We're putting in our capital losses now. Noting that I hang it there until, oh, it's opened up. I don't want it to open up, but let's put it under that. Under that, because those sections have opened. Makes it a little bit challenging, but Let's try to drop it. I can just get it there. There we go. So let's wind that up like that. So this is all going to make some sense. Okay, so we've got a capital gains in there and we've got our capital losses. Unlink that note and now we've got to get our... We've got a couple of other sections there, right? So we've got a couple... Comprehensive expenditure, with this, which is really other comprehensive income, which is our unrealized gains. We're going to drop those in there as well. And try to get that blue line to go in. So it's a comprehensive expenditure. Now, our balancing adjustments, which is essentially profit loss on disposal of plant and equipment, typically, will un link that note because we're going to drag in our decreasing balancing adjustments. Okay, and we've got one other one which is foreign foreign loss uh, foreign currency gains. Or maybe we only have foreign currency gains. A, B, C, D, E, F. Yep, we're, oh yeah, there we go. There it is. I thought we had it. So you can see what we've essentially tried to do with our taxonomy is have a gain, the gains in the revenue section and the losses in the expenses section. But of course, gains and losses is a little bit more meaningful. So let's now, let's now fix the formula. So we want to go at and that we'll use our capital gains plus at, and we'll use other comprehensive income plus at, and we'll use foreign exchange gains and at, so sorry, we've got to go plus at, and this time we want increasing balancing. So those, those are all the pluses, and then minus at capital losses. I might have to scroll down to find those. Decreasing, so definitely want to find those capital losses here yeah, capital losses minus comprehensive expenditure Minus 
minus decreasing balancing adjustments see I'm, I'm noting the names here because don't forget these do wrap down and we don't need the we, we don't need to name all of them we only need to, to, to name the top level so we've got to decreasing balancing adjustments and now we want to add our foreign exchange losses so when I say add we should actually go minus so we got foreign exchange losses and now you can see our formula accounts for everything in the sector so why don't we now rename this because we've done what we need So I've re renamed uh, the document as such. And if I reloaded this, you'll see that will take effect. And if we want to test this, if we want to test this template, let's go to the client and give it a whirl. So we've got custom reports. I'll remove the old one so there's no confusion and financial reports, and we will use our gains and losses, gains, losses, modified 22nd, which is today. And let's create those and see how that goes. You know, I think I actually forgot to do one thing. So you'll see our gains and losses presenting nicely, but noting that I didn't, and I need my three years of comparatives because we know that there's, or at least I know in the data set, we've got, this is our first year, yes. And this is, so capital gains minus capital losses. But you'll notice that what we didn't have is we didn't have a note. So let's just go and see how we can fix that. And I'm going to make a, a repair on this. So here's my gains and losses. Now, noting that I actually want this to reflect as a note. So I'm going to create a note, gains and losses. It'll be in the notes to the financials. And here we've got gains and losses. So let's leave it exposed like that. I won't even move it from number 23, just so that you can see what's happening here. No need to even save that. take out our old report. You don't have to, but just so that there's no confusion as to which uh, which one I'm working on. So gains, losses with notes, edited today, the 22nd of January, and let's create this. I won't even change the name. And the one thing I do want to do is, I do want to, compare with three years and let's see how that looks so if we have a look in our comprehensive income you can see now we've got this gains and losses which should reflect to a note so of course what you should do is in the template make sure you've rolled it up so that you get a single line item but if you click through to that you'll see you've now got the granular detail as to exactly what the node is composed of. And here, of course, we've just simply got gains and losses. But you'll note also from the formula that I put in there, it works correctly because it, even though all the values are, are positive, you notice that obviously revenues are positive and expenses are positive. So if you've mixed the two, which is what we've done in our gains and losses, then of course you need to use the minus signs to subtract any of the losses which is what you saw me do in the formula. 
and here we have it. Now, of course, you could well have repositioned the note during the presentation, during the build presentation of the template, but you could also do it e equally as well here, right? But of course, this won't reflect the same every time you go and reuse this somewhere else. Um, so if you reuse that template with another company's um, reports and you want the gains and losses to reflect, you'd have to move the note around. Whereas if you've done it in the template, you don't have to worry about it. Always present in the same spot.